Hello everyone, this is John Minarsic Fine Art, and I want to introduce you to our painting for today. This is an 18 by 24, and as opposed to being on the hardwood, like the last few I did, this one is on stretched linen, and it also has an inch and a half um, deep cradle that I painted. I don't show the painting of the cradle on the video, just the main painting itself. So I hope you stick around and enjoy the work, and I'll talk to you in a bit. Hello everyone and welcome to another oil painting video. I am using an 18 by 24 stretched linen canvas. Uh, this is a Centurion Deluxe linen that I got from Jerry's Artorama. It, uh, it's an 18 by 24, I believe I said, and it came in a three pack and it, um, the three pack was on sale this week or last week, I should say when I bought it. And I want to say the canvas comes out to like 36 or $38 a piece which for an 18 by 24 stretch linen with an inch and a half cradle is, it's a real deal. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just laying in color with a little bit of French ultramarine mixed with um, a little bit of olive green. And basically just a hair. And it's thinned down a lot with the walnut elkin medium that I'm using. I'm also using Windsor Newton Griffin Elkid uh, oil paints. I love those because they dry so quickly. This thing will be touch dry probably 24 hours later. I'm going to have some thicker areas here and there with a the knife, so it'll take a little bit longer, but 24 hours is probably no problem for touch dry. So one of the things I'm doing here is having fun in creating. Now, even when I have a regular sketch in, if you've watched any of my videos, it's rarely a detailed sketch. I put in a pencil sketch with shapes and general ideas, Kind of like a starting point. Now this is something that I've been thinking about more and more, and I've done a couple of paintings like this, and I really like them. And I'm just laying in the elements that I want with thin paint, a similar color, and going from there. Okay, these trees that I'm putting in now, I will cover with the sky, but I like the composition, so they'll be put back in after the sky is done. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking off, almost like you would in a watercolor, where I'm thinking the highlights on the uh, mountains are going to be, just to get an idea of how much I like it or don't like it. So I'm thinking to myself, hey, that's not too bad. So I'm looking for highlights here. That's why I'm wiping off right now. It's not going to be um, the finished product uh, where some tonalists do, because I'm not a tonalist painter. Um, I'm going to have much thicker paint um, as the painting goes on. But this is kind of a nice way to create a composition, get a real nice feel for everything, and kind of go from there. If you notice, my brushes keep shedding on me. I don't use real expensive brushes. That brush I got there is a two-inch bristle brush that I got from Ace Hardware. And I want to say it was like 250 265 something like that. It was just... I don't like spending a lot of money on my brushes and because I found out when I did spend a lot of money the way I use them I abuse them pretty good and even though I clean them after every session with um, my bristle magic brush cleaner which is um, a green uh, brush cleaner no petroleum products and then I use warm soap and water afterwards to condition them a little bit um, I still go through the brushes the bristles come out and everything else so I just Instead of spending $50 on a brush, I'll spend, you know, $253, $3. So now what I'm doing is I'm just putting colors in now to kind of get an idea of what looks good and what doesn't. So there's some straight alizarin crimson uh, in the sky at the foothills of the mountains on the um, foreground side of the riverbank. And now I'm putting in a little burnt umber, and I'm just kind of playing here, seeing what looks good, what doesn't look good, and going from there. I don't know how much of this alizarin crimson is going to show up in the final painting. In the sky, a lot of it. At the foothills of the mountains and on this side of the riverbank, I'm not sure at this stage when I'm uh, painting. But I'm putting in the color anyway to kind of give myself a real nice... I don't want to say color schematic, but maybe that is pretty accurate. And here I'm adjusting the river. I'm making it a little wider at the uh, end of the river as opposed to the front. And in a little bit, I'm actually going to readjust it again to make it a little narrower by the waterfall. And what I'm doing is just adjusting the perspective 
When you don't see me in the frame, I'm probably standing back about six to eight feet to get a really good idea of what the perspective is and to make sure that it's pretty correct. And then, you know, I do that on all my paintings, regardless of the size. You know, I'll stand back and I'll check it out and I'll say, okay, that's good. Or no, this is off, whatever the case may be. And I just stood back and it was off a little bit. So now I'm narrowing the um, part of the river closest to the waterfall. And now I'm pretty happy with the perspective of the river. Now, I hope everybody had a really, really nice Labor Day weekend. This is, uh, I did this on Sunday. So it's the day before Labor Day. My wife and I had all our errands and all of our stuff out of the way. We visited my folks on Saturday and had a real nice dinner and everything else. So Sunday was is my usual uh, video day anyway that I'll make. And then I'll post them on Monday or Tuesday after I do the editing and stuff. But um, the weather was kind of humid, but we didn't get much rain, a little drizzle. We went to a couple of art shows that uh, we wanted to check out, not as uh, vendors, but as patrons. And we bought a real nice print from an uh, older gentleman that was an oil painter. And we had a real nice time, so I hope everybody else did as well and was safe and enjoying themselves. Okay, now I'm adding the white to my sky to blend in and make my sky opaque and just give it the nice the nice softness that I like in my skies. And if you noticed in a lot of my paintings lately, I stopped using a lot of blue in my sky. I'll have a decent amount in it, but I'll also put in a lot of other colors. Um, this one, I'm not going to use Payne's Gray like I did on my last sky. Actually, I do use it for the clouds a little bit, I remember now. Um, the sky itself, I don't. It's alizarin, white, and French ultramarine. And then I'm going to add the Payne's Gray and titanium white for clouds in a little bit. And then I'm going to scrape a little paint off that got a little thick. And then I'll play with it a little bit until I get it, you know, kind of where I'm looking to go. And that's one of the fun things about it, too, is you can really have a lot of fun. I've, as long as you don't go overboard with, you know, um, fussing with it, just a little bit, you can really exactly hone in how you want it, sculpt it how you want it, whatever phrase you want to use. Okay, now I'm taking basically the outline of my mountain, and then I'm just darkening it up so I can add my highlights. And I'm going to use the brush highlights first, and that's going to give me an idea of where I'm at with my shadow and highlight. And then once I establish my highlight and my shadow, then I'll go over it with thicker paint with a palette knife, and then I'll pretty much finish off the mountain. And that's a technique that I started using. I don't even know if I learned that from somebody or I just started doing it, but uh, it works for me. I basically highlight, shadow, and then re-highlight. And that way it, it cleans up pretty nice. Now, if you look at the way my highlights are going, it looks like the highlight is on the left side, which it is. So the light source is coming from the upper left. If you notice, when I just put in that darker color, all of my strokes were going from left to right. And the reason I do that is when it comes to mountains, rocks too for that matter, it really molds them into a three-dimensional image, or the illusion, I should say, of a three-dimensional image really well. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm reestablishing those angled lines from left to right. And you can see the highlight real well. I could have left it like this, but I wanted the thicker paint. One of the things that I'm really enjoying is using thicker paint in areas where, you know, it belongs. And like I said, I could have left the mountains right the way they are right now. They have a real nice three-dimensional appeal to them, but I wanted to um, add the thicker paint with the knife. I'm really enjoying using the knife. And I don't use it on a painting exclusively as much as I did. I really like having the combination of brush and um, knife in my work. I think the two for the, my style fits really well. Okay, so now, if you, as you see, I'm taking the same highlights now. I'm not changing where they're at or nothing, and I'm just adding the knife, and it's making it a little more rugged and a little more defined and a little brighter without going crazy bright. So see how much more they stand out and how much more rugged they look. Okay, 
so now I'm doing my clouds. And I ran into some problems with the clouds, and then I had to scrape off paint and do it again. And that's one of the beauties, one of the things I love about oil paint, as opposed to a paint like acrylic, which is a beautiful medium in the hands of people that know what they're doing. I am not among them. Um, it doesn't dry quickly, the oil paint. You know, these do for oil paints, but it's still many hours of open time that I can scrape off paint and reapply paint and kind of mold it to the way that I want it to look. This is a technique that I use that I got from Stuart Davies. He does it a little differently than I do, but the basic technique I got from him, so I want to give him credit for it. And that's basically putting color down for your clouds and then use a brush to softly move the paint. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm not blending the paint with a hard hand, okay? This is, it's hard to tell because of how fast I'm going. And I do this, have this on, you know, a higher speed for the video. But I'm using very, very light pressure. The only thing I'm doing is I'm using just enough pressure to move the paint that is the cloud, okay? Because I don't want to mix what, I'm, uh, what I put on for the cloud with the sky color, okay? So if you have a firmer pressure, that'd be a mix. So when you're doing this, if you want to try this technique, it's a lot of fun. But you just have to make sure it's a very, very light touch. So you're moving the top layer of the paint only. You're kind of diffusing it. And that way it doesn't uh, blend. It just, you know, adds to it. And you can see me scraping paint off right there. It just, when it gets too thick, it makes it a little tougher to work with. So don't be afraid, whether you're using wood panels, uh, cradled wood, um, stretched canvas, stretched linen, don't be afraid to scrape paint off in certain areas and reapply until you get the look you want. I mean, this is your creation, so you have a right to make it look the way you want. You see the way I'm just kind of fluffing up and trying to put movement in the clouds? I'm using the flat part. I'm using the edge part of the brush. Use whatever parts of the brush that you need to to get the look that you're looking for. Within reason, there is really no right and wrong way when you're painting. It is really what you like. Art is so subjective, it's incredible. There's paintings that I've done that I've hated and somebody's bought them in then, you know, minutes. And there's other paintings that I really liked that, you know, two years later, I still have them. So it's a very subjective medium. It's a lot of fun. And you got to take it seriously to a degree, but not obsess over it. You know, do your best, obviously, but you need to have fun with it. You need to allow your creativity to flow and not hamper yourself with a bunch of rules. There are certain techniques and certain guidelines that you need to do for some, you know, even abstract, you have certain guidelines you have to follow to get the aesthetics the way they should be. But no rules in painting are just hardcore where you must, must, must do this. You know, it really is up to the artist himself. So now I'm putting in my trees. Now my trees are olive green and alizarin crimson and Payne's gray and French ultramarine in different mixtures. And basically what I'm doing is giving a variety of the color and I will be doing a variety of the texture later. Now, these little ones in the foothill, I'm making a lot smaller intentionally because I want them to look like they're back a little further. And most of that color that I'm using for those foothill um, trees is a Payne's Gray and French Ultramarine. I want it to be, you know, pushed back a little bit more so than the trees on the left. I want those to look like they're a little more forward. And that's one of the reasons or one of the ways you get depth in your painting. And if you notice, I, uh, the angle that I have here, I, you probably noticed me using a lot of paper towels. I have not figured out how to not use a lot of paper towels. So make sure that you have plenty on hand and that you buy them from the dollar store or wherever you can get them the cheapest because you do go through a lot of them. Okay, I'm putting more of the trees on the foothills because I want that mountain pushed back a little bit. But again, the color I'm using has a lot of blue in it and the panes of gray as well. 
And I wanted to use that, like I said, to push everything back. And now I have my ol uh, olive green that I'm using for the foreground here. And I'm basically just going to finish covering the white. So in a couple of seconds here, the white of the canvas will be completely gone. And now I can just concentrate on finishing the elements and finishing the painting. One of the things you need to look at to make it easier for yourself is it was difficult for me at first, but it actually ended up being easier later. When you're doing a painting, try not to concentrate on just trees or just mountains. Concentrate on big shapes that turn into trees, that turn into mountains, that turn into water. And I know that sounds contradictory, but it's really not. Um, like the foreground here. That's basically a big triangle. And it's going to be sculpted into something differently later, but it's still a triangle. The waterfall I'm about to do is a square, okay, the way that one is. And I'm just going to lightly bring some white paint down to make it look like the water that's coming over the falls. So try to look at shapes more so than elements in the beginning. And it kind of takes the intimidation factor away of, oh my goodness, this doesn't look like a tree or it doesn't look like a mountain, whatever the case may be. And when you're just operating with shapes, everything else seems to come into play a lot easier and a lot nicer. Okay, now remember when we laid this sketch in, I was using a lot of oil and no white and the French ultramarine and there was some cerulean blue and there was a little bit of a lizard in the water, but it was somewhat transparent. I'm adding the white here to get rid of the transparency, okay? And more hairs that fall off my brush. And then I'm gonna be adding in the cerulean a little bit and then a lot of the French ultramarine and a little bit of Payne's gray to get it darker where I want and then I'll sculpt it into waves, which will look like the moving river. So I know it doesn't look like much right now, but these are the steps for my style anyway that I have to take in order to, you know, get the look the way I want it. And it really doesn't take a long time. This whole painting took, you know, about an hour. And that whole hour, it was a lot of fun. And I know I've, you know, it seems like that's quick for an 18 by 24 oil painting, but I've been painting for such a long time that, you know, without even thinking about it, you know, I'm reasonably fast. And yes, if you haven't noticed, always, if you're painting in oils and acrylics especially, watercolor, it's not as uh, crucial, but oils and acrylics it is. Keep a pair of tweezers handy on your easel or close to you because it doesn't matter how much your brushes are, you're going to have a certain amount of shedding. And the tweezers are really good to uh, get it off your painting surface. Okay, now I'm doing the waves. And I'm going to get a bigger filbert brush here in a second. And I'm just going to get the waves going here. And I know those look very unrealistic waves. And they are. Yeah, they look like mushrooms, I guess. And they're not going to stay that way. I'm just getting movement in the water. Or I should say where I want movement in the water to be. And then I'm going to take my big bristle brush and do the same thing to the water that I did in the sky. I'm going to take that, all those white caps, let's say, and I'm going to move that paint. Now, in some areas, I'm going to use heavier pressure to make lines, let's say, that are going to look like waves and movements. But overall, I'm still just pushing the paint around very lightly to start with. And then I'm sculpting it into the river look. And as you can see, it's starting to work a little bit. See how you're starting to get the movement of the water now? And more shedding bristles. Oh, no. That style I absolutely love. And now I'm just adding in a little bit of water with the knife to give it a little, I don't want to say rougher texture, but I do want a little bit more movement than I was getting. And watch this when I start to blend it now. I'm sorry, when I start to move the paint, not blend it. Really light. There you go. Now you have a believable river. And especially when I start putting in the, um, the reeds on the bottom along the river bank and the bottom of the painting that uh, are going to be the backdrop for the flowers that I put in close to the end. 
once that goes in, it's really going to bring the whole painting together. Okay, now this is yellow, which is a mid-ground color um, in this case. And I'm just using the palette knife. And if you look at the angle I'm using, I want this to look like there's a river bank that's sloping towards the river. And I do the same thing from the river bank out of the painting on the bottom in the foreground. And it had a real nice uh, appeal to it when I um, finished it up. So I'm putting in the color to get all of the direction correct. And then I'll take a bristle brush and just tap in areas to just bring it together. And what this does is when you use a knife, you have a lot of harsh lines. Okay, this is going to get rid of the harsh lines and blend it all together without losing the look of the palette knife. You can see the roughness of the knife, but now I just took a lot of those hard edges and softened those edges up a little bit. And again, those are tricks that you learn as you do it. The more you paint, the more things you learn, the more comfortable you are with the brush in your hand or the knife or both, you know, however you're doing your work. And it works out really well. That brush I'm using right now is a one inch bristle brush that I got from um, Ace Hardware. I got it with that two inch that I used for the sky and the water and some other stuff. I don't think that brush that I'm using right now was $2. And it's really good with the way you can put in uh, trees and bushes and whatever the case may be. Okay, now I'm having difficulty, or well, I will be here in a second, with the reeds here. And the only reason why is because I got a little too heavy-handed, and you see how light some of these are going. And that's basically because the paint was a little thicker on the river than I usually do, and I was a little heavier-handed than normal. So I have to go over it a few times with, um, with the darker paint, which is Payne's Grain Ultramarine. And then ultimately, I still have to scrape off some area with a knife. And then I restart it because the paint just got too thick and out of control. One of the things you're going to find in oil painting is you need thick paint at the end to make it look good, I think, to give it more depth and more body and stuff like that. But you have to be careful on... Sorry about that. My windows are open because it's beautiful out and a motorcycle went by my house. But you have to put the paint on thicker at the end. And in oil painting, sometimes it's very easy to get thicker sooner than you want. And it just looks like mishmash, which you can see right there. That's ugly. And that won't be there for long. Because I'm going to scrape it off, and then there we go. Just get rid of that ugly stuff. And then redo it. And then what I'm going to do is, the uh, brush didn't give me the look I wanted for the flowers. So then I'm going to put the flowers on with a palette knife. And that looked a lot better. It, it uh, gave me the thicker look to the flowers that I wanted, the deeper look, and it was a whole lot nicer um, when I did it the second way around. And you'll see what I mean here really quick. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful out. Like I said, this is uh, today is actually Labor Day that I'm editing this video. I did the video yesterday that I'm editing it today. But... It's like 70 degrees. It's got a cool breeze to it. And to have this kind of weather in the beginning of September in the Midwest, I'm a western suburb of Chicago, is awesome. You know, there's a lot of times where at the beginning of September lately, and it's, you know, 90 degrees and dry, and it's overcast. It's got a cool breeze, a little humid, but still very comfortable. So we have the windows open in our house, and every once in a while you hear somebody from outside. So if it came through too much on the video, I apologize. But uh, the video is almost over, and it doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, people outside at the moment. Here I just changed my knife to a smaller knife, same uh, teardrop shape. But the other one was just a little big for what I was doing. But basically, I'm just tapping and small little strokes to get the flowers in. And I'm going to add the white to the flowers in a little bit, just to give them a little bit of, uh, I want to lighten them up a little bit, give them a little bit of contrast. You can see the white right there. So you've got the uh, dark and the light together for little highlights on the um, flowers. Makes them stand out a little better, makes them a little prettier, I think. 
And then I'm going to use the knife, and I'm going to also use that technique right here where I'm going to slope it from the right to the left, just like I did in the midground from the mountain down to the riverbank. Now, that part in the bottom right corner I do not like, and I'm going to work on it again, and I'm going to like it even less. And eventually, I'm going to scrape that off and start over. And again, the beauty of oil painting, scrape it off and start over. And it's not an issue. It Actually, you're encouraged to do it. It looks good. Yeah, I really was pleased at how this composition turned out, even though there wasn't a plan when uh, I made it. You know, when you saw me in the beginning, I just took basically a couple of colors with no white. I wanted it semi-transparent, a little more oil so it really glided off the brush easily. Kind of put some color down, see what shapes I can make, and then refine those shapes is all I did. Everything you see here, except for the flowers, was on that initial sketch, let's say, I did with the... Uh, French Ultramarine and Payne's Gray mixture I had. It's just now that they're all refined. That's all it is. So one of the things you want to do is play with color. Don't worry about what anything looks like and just throw color down. And then once you have it down, see what shapes you can refine out of the color that you just put down. And I guarantee you're going to have a lot of fun. Okay, you just saw, now that's almost straight uh, Indian yellow, okay? And it doesn't even show up, and you can see mud. So I tried it a couple of times, and then I said, you know something? It was way too thick, not going to work. So at this point in time, I'm getting ready to take a knife and say goodbye. There we go. Scrape it off. And now I'm going to take a little bit of lemon yellow, actually quite a bit of lemon yellow on my fan brush. And I'm going to make it look a heck of a lot better than it did. What do you know? It shows up. You take the thick paint off and then the thin, the other paint will stick on uh, a lot better. Now, the thick parts of my painting, where are they? Okay. If you look at the trees to the left, there are three or four of them that are the tallest, that, the thick paint, I kept. The waterfall itself, that is thick paint. All the flowers on the front riverbank are thick paint with the palette knife. The highlights to the mountains are thick paint with the palette knife. And then some of the foreground that I used with the palette knife, I left thick, and I only tapped a little bit of some others. And basically, what I'm trying to point out is Using the palette knife with the brush gives you a real nice contrast with texture. Contrast doesn't always have to be light and dark or big and small or anything like that. Contrast can also be texture. And that's what I'm finding more appealing in my paintings lately. I'm using the knife maybe 35, 40% of the painting and the rest of it is the brush. And I'm finding that it really works for the way I want my paintings to look. So I hope you enjoyed this painting, and if you did, consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you hit the subscribe button, you may as well hit that little notification bell. I try to upload a video at least once a week, um, usually on Tuesday, sometimes on Monday, or, but Tuesday is usual. And uh, I hope everybody had a great Labor Day. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.